Core 1, practice paper number 1, question number 7. Now no way can I do the whole of question number 7 on one sheet of paper. So I've actually split it into the three parts. But also I've shortened the question slightly so it's a very good idea to have this in front of you just to follow it through. Of course you've worked it out haven't you? So you can go through your working out at the same time. Question number seven. A line, we'll call it L1, and this line has an equation of y equals 2x minus 4. Now line 2 passes through the point 8, 2 and is in fact perpendicular to this first line. So we've got the line of y equals x minus 4, and that's called L1. We've got another line which passes through the point x is 8, y is 2, and it's perpendicular to the first line. So let's look at this first line, L1. L1 has a gradient of 2, because you should appreciate this is what we call y equals mx plus c. y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient, and x, uh, sorry, plus c, this would be, that this line would pass through the point minus 4 if we drew it. But we don't have to draw it. So looking at that, you should immediately know the grade of that line is 2. You should also know, let's put no. You should also know that if you multiply 2 by the gradient of a line that's perpendicular, you will always get minus 1. If you multiply the gradient of two lines, if you multiply the gradient of two lines and they're perpendicular to one another, you will always get minus 1. So therefore, if we want to know the gradient of a line that's perpendicular to this line, then that said line must have a gradient of a half. A little fact that you should know. If you multiply two gradients together, of two straight lines and you get minus one then those two lines are at right angles to each other. So using that fact we can suss out that the second line has a gradient of minus a half. So now we can say right L2 has an equation of y equals mx plus c, because that's any straight line. But we now know the gradient of this second line is minus a half. So our job now is to find out the value of c. Where does this second line pass the y-axis? Well, to do that, we can find the value of c by substituting any coordinate that it passes through, any coordinate that this line passes through. And we're told that it passes through the coordinate 8, 2. So let's substitute the value of x is 8, y is 2 into this. So y is 2, x is 8, so minus a half of 8 is minus 4. So from this we can suss out that c itself must be 6. So we've got the equation. is y equals mx plus c. Now there's always more than one way to do a question, which I think I've already mentioned to you before. As long as your way is mathematically correct, and the examiner can follow you working out, then you'll be okay. So let's look at another way I could have done this question. You should know that the gradient of a straight line equals the difference between two y coordinates over the difference between their x coordinates. So you can use this to say, right, we know the gradient is minus a half, so you'll still need to do this piece up here. We know that it goes through the coordinate 8, 2, in other words, x is 8, y is 2, so we can say it goes through the point 2 on for the y, and, whoopsie daisy, I just want a minus sign there, 8. 
Now, let's rearrange this. Where's that minus sign? Well, you can either put it with the 1 or put it with the 2. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to put it with the 1. So if I multiply 2 by the top line and multiply minus 1 with this bottom line, if you rearrange this, add 4 to both sides, divide both sides by 2, you get the same answer, thankfully. Doesn't matter which way you do these things, as long as you show you're working out, the examiner can follow your drift, what you're thinking, you're okay. Let's look at some marks. Well, you'll get a mark for appreciating about the gradient of the original line and the gradient of the line that's at right angles to it. Using that to work out the value of C and then ending up with the equation. So four marks, whichever way you do it. That's question number seven. So if you want to see all of the questions, not only on this paper, but on paper two and three, and obtain your copies of paper 1, 2 and 3, you'll need to get the complete DVD. So visit www.mathstutor.biz and there you'll find all the information of how to get this DVD and others.